Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today we'll make sure that the enemies are fixed to a specific game map. Right now they just run around, regardless if you change the map or not. So that is what we're going to work on today. Let's go! Just a quick reminder, all of the code I cover in my videos can be found on GitHub. Each episode will have its own branch. There's also a Discord server for this channel. Come in and say hello. If you wish to go the extra mile to support my work, you can do that on my Buy My Coffee page or becoming a member here on YouTube. Links can be found in the description below. Let's begin in our game map. So in our game map, we should store everything that we need for the game map. Right now we have the building, doorways, etc. But let's add another one for enemies or skeletons for now. We will have more, but we're starting off with just skeletons for now. And we can name it skeleton array list. Yeah, good enough. Whenever we create a game map, we want to give it the skeleton array list as well. So let's just add it here in the constructor. Array list, skeleton, skeleton array list. Yeah. And then this dot skeleton array list equals skeleton array list. All right. And of course, we're going to need a getter for it as well, eventually. And I think that's good enough in our game map. Then we can head over to our map manager and check out the errors. And we get errors because we don't give everything to our game map when we create it in the constructor. We're going to need some sort of method because giving it here, new array list and then skeletons is just no, let's not do it like that. We're going to make a method in our help method class. Let's call it public static array list skeleton and we can name it get skeletons randomized yeah that's good enough so this method is gonna randomize the position for the skeletons in a map for example but first we're going to need to know how many do we want well we want one skeleton do we want hundred skeletons etc and then we also need to know where on the map they're going to be placed or we need to know the bounds of the actual game map. And the simplest way we can do this is by just asking for the integer array. So game map array, which is if we take a look in the map manager, is either this one or this one. And we can't give it the map because we haven't created a map yet before we actually... <laughs> before we actually call this method. So we're gonna have to give it a 2D array instead. And then now we have know the amount of skeletons and we also know the max width and height that they can be placed on. So first off, let's just get the width and height right away. So int width is equal to game map array. Uh, width is the first, so like that. Then multiply that with game constants dot sprite dot size because this might be just 20 tiles then it would be width of 20 but it's a tile so we need to multiply it by the size of the tile and then we do the same for height so height equals game up array dot length times game constants dot sprite dot size and you do not belong there so now all we need to do is to create a for loop and i is equal to zero, i is less than amount, and then i plus plus. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need brackets. And we're gonna need a array list, so array list skeleton, r list, skeleton array list, yeah. New array list. Can make it like that. Can add the return right away. And now we wanna get a random x and y. So we're gonna store it in a float. So float x is equal to math dot random. So random is gonna return if we check here. Control left click. Returns a double, not a float. We need to remember that. Returns double with a positive sign greater than or equal to zero and less than one. So it can be zero to nine point nine 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 nine, etc. So with that, we can just multiply it with width 
So if it's, it won't be one, but almost a one, then it's gonna be the width. If it's zero, then it's gonna be zero, and so, and so on. But we need to recast this over to a float. And we can copy this, paste it, go Y, and not width, but height. So now we have a random X and Y value. So we can just say skeleton array list dot add new skeleton and then position. So new is X and Y. Because a skeleton only needs the position, nothing else. And here is where we were. And I think this is done. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that is all we need. We get the width and height of the map. We create this uh, array list. We create a skeleton for each of the amounts or to ma match the amount. And uh, random x and y is based on math.random by multiplying with width or height. Add it in the array list and then we return the array list. Yeah, that looks good. Now we can go back to our map manager and call this method. So inside map we start with is help methods, get skeletons, randomized, how many? Let's go with two. And the array is called inside array. So inside array. Can probably minimize that. And yeah, that looks good. Then we do the same here. Help method gets get skeleton randomized. How many do we want? Let's go with five. And then outside array for the outside map. Yeah, that looks good. What we need to do now is to make it so when we are playing that they are actually using this array or rather the array of skeletons in the game map. So into playing class, let's go to the very top here where we have our skeleton array list. So this is the one that we've been using so far. We're just gonna comment it out and see all the errors. We can hide that. We don't need spawn skeleton. We're gonna leave this for a second. We're still gonna need to update them, but we're not gonna use that array up here. We're gonna create a new one or get the one uh, this one we can also comment out, check attack, we're gonna keep it for now, render, keep it for now. So we need to get the actual skeleton array list from the map manager. So let's see here if we have the map manager, we do. So here we can say instead of skeletons we can say map manager dot get so we don't have get current map, do we? No. Do we not have get current map? Huh, how about that? All right, so let's just add it above the test map method and public get current map. Yes. So then we go back to playing get current map, get skeleton array list. Yeah. I think we're gonna copy this because we're gonna call it a few times. Check attack. Da, 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 da. Render, yes. Anything else here? No, I think we're ready to test. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, let's, uh, let's run this. And right here we have a forgotten method that we don't use, but it's calling another method. And it's in playing UI. So we're just gonna comment, you know what, let's remove it. We're not gonna call that again. Let's give this another try and see what happens. All right, I see four. Where's the fifth? Oh, he's up there. One, two, three, four, five, yes. Let's see if we have two, and we do but they are running around outside the map, which is not good. So let's get that working right away. And it's gonna be in our skeleton class, where we have our update move, 
we're gonna need the game map it is inside. So game map, game map. And then here we're also gonna ask for the game map and pass it along to our update move, game okay, map. Then let's see, if we're going down, da, 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 uh, top, no, but the bottom, should, it should actually be bottom because we're going down, so we better check uh, the bottom edge. Not game.height, but game map dot get Height. We don't have get height. Let's add that so we don't have to do the calculations all the time. Public um, int get map with. We're gonna start with return get array array with times game constant dot sprite dot size. Then we're using this one. We get the size in width and then multiply it to get the map width. Yeah. Public int get map height. Return get array get array height times game constants dot sprite not class sprite size. And now in the skeleton class get height map height. Going up, we don't need to check or change. Going right, hitbox.right is more than map.getWidth. Left, we don't need to check. All right, then we just need to give it this map. So map manager dot get current map. Is that all? Let's give it another try. Launch successful, that's nice. All right. Zero is no issue. Let's just check the inside map. Yeah, they are bouncing perfectly. Doink, 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 doink. Yep, <laughs> it's looking good. I just wanna make one final adjustment and that's in our help methods. Could actually be a little bit of a bug here when we're getting the width, we're getting the max width of the entire map, then it could be that the skeleton is spawned with his top left corner just left of the edge. And then when he starts running around, he's gonna run into issues. So we just wanna remove one in both length and in height to take into account that the hitbox is not gonna be outside the right side of the hitbox is not going to be outside the map the image here is going to show how it could look and that is not correct it should be there and just to show that it still works i don't know why it wouldn't but it will like so perfect now of course we have walls here and they shouldn't be able to run on the walls. That is something we're gonna address in the next episode when we deal with collisions. But for this episode, it's looking really good. All right, that didn't take very long to implement. Next episode, we will start working on our base for collisions. So make sure that you're subscribed and like this video if it was interesting. Until the next one, take care now and have a wonderful day. Cheers.